Have you ever had somebody ask you, is your hobby dying? Is it fading away? What's your answer to that? Well, I've got some thoughts on it. Stand by, and you'll catch on what I'm talking about. Good morning, friends. Welcome to the deck. Okay, I cheated. I'm not out in the woodlot. Sorry about that. Uh, things have not been going well that way, and we're still busy. It's just the continuing saga of merging two full homes and garages into one. We're making great progress. Thank you for your comments, best wishes I've gotten in the past few weeks. And yes, now today's going to be different. Today we're going to talk about amateur radio. I've had a number of inquiries and requests that I update you on my amateur radio life. Well, part of it I can do right here on the, the table on the sunroom. Now, I've deliberately set things so I'm already close. I don't need to use my wire, my corded mic. And uh, we're getting by well. So, let's talk about amateur radio for Canada and only some extent I can really mention the USA because I've never received a, a opportunity even. Uh, when I was in a position where American, um, excuse the itching nose, I feel a sneeze coming on, where Americans could do their testing at a ham fest. And I thought that was great. I watched a video last night the number of people who have been home studying and doing their tests in the U.S. from at home is phenomenal. I'm not sure exactly how far it goes that way for us in Canada. Through the Radio Amateurs of Canada website, you can purchase the study guide and study to your heart's content. Um, normally, locally, amateurs are certified to test. And uh, that's the case of when I got mine. When I got my license, I uh, happened to hear it mentioned. I, I was invited to a, a, an amateur radio club meeting. There I met a guy, <laughs> VE4TV, Tango Victor. TV is my initials. And he just got the license, or the, the, that, that call sign. And they all rejoiced with him. And I was introduced to a, a good group of amateurs, friendly people. I'm going to say probably there were 70 people or thereabouts at the meeting, a good number. And really convinced me, yes, I can do this. And so I signed up within, I'm going to say, a week or two at one of our regional uh, technical schools. Um, and this school's name has changed as they do from time to time. Um, I signed up to take a basic amateur radio course, and it cost, I forget, wasn't much. The school insisted that the amateur had to charge uh, to cover expenses at school. For instance, photocopying materials. We used the classroom and all that stuff. That worked extremely well for me. And uh, by December, we were supposed to write our exam the 9th of January, and by the middle of December, I said, look, can I do the test? I had been a radio tech in the Army for three years, and although I didn't remember everything, a uh, good bit came back. Sure, and I did the test at his home on a Sunday afternoon. And so there's different ways of doing it. Now, when I started out, I started out with a... 50 watt, 2 meter, which is 144 to 148 megahertz, mobile transceiver, a battery, an old battery at that, a mag mounted quarter wave antenna stuck on top of the filing cabinet, and I could talk close by on, uh, without a repeater or on a repeater. That's how I got started. Now, for those of you who are thinking about it, 
And there's been a number have mentioned that, you know, this is a possibility. I've retired now, one of them mentioned. And, and in my normal <laughs> lackadaisical or whatever way you want to call it, I did not write down. I'm thinking Chuck was one. I'm not sure of the others, but there was there were several mentioned. You know, is it worth getting into amateur radio? Is it expensive? Well, okay. Before me, you can't see on the da on the table. I've got three radios. Okay, we'll go with the oldest radio first. It's more modern than the second one, okay? And here we are. This is what they call a dual band. In other words, it, it operates on two different amateur radio frequency bands. The 2 meters, 144 to 148, and the 70 centimeters in the 400 megahertz band. Now this one also is a digital radio. It'll do digital D-star as well. Quite expensive. It's a 5 watt radio, and this is a bit much even to start with. You don't need to have all those features, but I got them at the time to try and, and do multiple things. When I first moved into my home here, I had put an antenna on the roof, and with this 5 watt radio on digital mode, D-Star, I talked to Winnipeg, the repeater was 55 kilometers line of sight. Okay? Now, so, and it was quite expensive. Okay, and now it's it's an, an older version now, we'll say. But still, um, very functional. And the antenna, yeah. Ideally, you want 19 inch antenna. is going to be far better for two meters. Now, this one by... Same brand, okay, ICOM. It has a smaller display, um, larger speaker. They both have the DTMF and the tones and, and all that on here, and you can um, select your band, your, whether it's um, high, low, or medium power, whether it's um, uh, uh, memory channel or call channel or whatever. You can lock your display. And actually, this little guy gets used more than the other one. Now, those are actually quite adequate for a new amateur to start if you live in a city. If you live in or near a, a, a city or repeaters, a repeater even, one of these, pass your license, get your call sign, you can pick one of these up inexpensively. Now, I also have in the garage in a box from my move two Chinese radios. Uh, Baofeng dual band, 5 watt. That one, um, there was some controversy from what I remember seeing on YouTube about that being exactly legal in the U.S. Not sure. Um, and I used it in my boat when I was out on the Red River boating because it would, I could listen to the Yacht Club. The, uh, the Yacht Club had a, a two-meter radio there. And so if they called out for somebody, or a message out, um, I could at least hear it. And this, this radio here, in comparison, okay, the, because of a, it, it was written off on an insurance claim because of flooding and it was the store roof leaked and the owners of the property didn't take care of it so the box the packaging and everything was damaged by water therefore it was not perfect right now as it happens the radio was totally tested by the technicians and the radio was fine and it works great it will use a handset microphone uh, this one is more water resistant. I, I, I won't call it waterproof because now the seal here, which pops off, okay, it pops off. It's got a different kind of connector that seals on waterproof. They both are sealed here in the charge cable, the charge plug, no problem. 
They're both good radios. You could get your license in Canada or the U.S., I'm certain. The basic license, you don't have HF privileges. Basic plus, which means a higher score on your test, you have far more privileges. And so, those could start you off. Now, I started off with actually the same brand as this radio I have here. Now, I'm going to hold the manual up, and you can even do a screenshot of that or write down the data. Okay, this is a Yesu, the, the, the least expensive Yesu. Um, I must admit, uh, when you're used to ICOM and Yesu's menuing system, drove me crazy. But one of the things that my prerequisite was. The front panel was fastened permanently to the main body. A lot of ICOMs, they'd gone where they'd separated a control unit, which is the face, from the main body, where they, you had it, 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 extension cables. So you could put it in the trunk of your car, under the seat, whatever. Anyway, what I have here now, and this is heavy only because you'll notice there's two boxes here, right? Okay, and we'll turn it this way. Now, one advantage of, of the radio, which is on top, is the fact that speakers in the front, instead of so many radios, it's on the bottom or on top. Okay, on the bottom is a 23 watt amp, sorry, 23 amp, 13.8 volt DC power supply. Now, this one is, I'm going to have to give it. 10 to 15 years, okay? Uh, I'll tell you what it is, just so you know. It's the Samalex America SEC-1223, okay? Input, 120 volts, 60 hertz, 5.5 amps. Output, 13.8 volts at 13 amps. Power supply. There's a fan in the bottom. You can see it down there. And that will move the air through it. The sides have got cooling grates. Works well. Now, my store where I bought it, he put in a marine uh, power source. Same as you get power sources in your car, but this one's got a rubber cover. And it's kind of drying out now. The radio itself is quite simple, and yet you need... A manual, if you're like me, you can pro pro program all three of these radios from your computer with the proper cabling software. Okay, so this one we know is a FTM 7250DR DE on the on the on the uh, manual is for Europe. Okay, so it's small, it's light. Um, I'm thinking the $325 range in Canada comes with a microphone and the microphones on a lot of these radios is using the same jack as your telephone. Okay, there's four, there's six wires in there uh, and six connectors. I'm not sure how many are in use. I can see uh, one. I can see all six are in use. Okay. Anyway, works well you click it in microphone is what they call a DTMF microphone so you've got buttons numbers and then as equates to uh, like number nine is X is, is W X Y Z so you click it a number of times you change when you're looking at the display you can dial up repeaters we can do that with the handhelds too Okay, you can control the repeaters. You can do that with them also. So these are ways, quite inexpensively, I'm going to say somewhere in Canada, probably this one with the power supply. Uh, the price, they, he quoted me in Winnipeg the other, not long ago, 
would come in close to $500 before taxes, okay? This guy was somewhere around the $500 mark too. A number of years ago, like I said, this was an, uh, because of an insurance claim, price was a whole $75. And they're good little radios. That's all you need to get started. Any more? More expensive? Yeah, like the D-Star from this one, you can buy, um, the ICOM had a model 880, it's no longer manufactured, um, had the D-Star in it. The one I have now in the house is the replacement for that, and it's an ID 4100. So, and you can go upwards. Now, with UHF and VHF, these five watt ones, okay, it, first off, it's line of sight. So, if you've got big buildings, in my case, trees, right now, my ex outside antenna on the roof is non functional. It will not get through the leaves and the trees. I have to move it. But you can set up quite simply. You don't need to. Uh, put you know a mint into it now my previous radio that I used for a number of years five years I guess was a IC 9100 at the time a matter of fact when I was selling it I checked on e eBay other sites they were still selling used $5,000 US and yes it was great. It had 100 watts instead of 5 watts or 50 watts. What do you really need? Well, all you need is enough power to make, your con to make a contact. Any more power than that, and you could be disturbing someone else. So, for me, this is how I look at right. Check your browsing. Check Radio Amateurs of Canada. Check Winnipeg Amateur Radio Club if you're in the Winnipeg area. Uh, and, and if you check the websites, Winnipeg Seniors Radio Club, Senior Citizens Radio Club, same thing, there may be something there. Normally you can find where you can have a class that you can attend, or it might be an online class, and let's face it, with Zoom, um, our, our ukulele club uses for its get-togethers and many people yeah, the, the queen the royal family uses it to communicate with uh, the members in in the far-flung areas There's, so it is a means of being able to communicate uh, and with zoom you can unlock your uh, unlock your microphone and be able to speak and they can the others can hear you so that is a good way to learn I'd suggest that if you're thinking about amateur radio don't even think any more about it if you can get a used radio and yes you could buy a used handheld radio that work in your town or city you may get it for a who knows like I say I've got an ocean and a, and a Baofeng Chinese radios and they're under a hundred dollars um, the, 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 the Baofeng I have to check on that one if we are and that's one reason why it's, it's it can't have it all out this stuff goes in my Aries box these two handhelds this radio with power supply like this okay this is an amateur radio station that I can put on site with our, our uh, municipal and town emergency communication center in case of an emergency. The fire hall for the town has got the same antenna I got on the roof with the best quality antenna cable you can get on a 100 foot tower. We can talk anywhere in our region with it. And so it is. Um, doesn't have to be much. Mine, I've made this one portable. 
programmed it for all the frequencies we need, and it's great for that. So, I encourage you, if you're thinking about amateur radio, don't, don't pause on it too long. Uh, it's not going to become any easier, I'm sure. It's not going to become harder, I'm sure of that too. It is a fantastic way to stay in contact with friends. An even better way to de develop friendships. Okay? The amateur radio community is a friend community. Not very... You, you, of course, like any group of people, there might be the odd one who's not the most pleasant. Fine. You interact with them as you choose. There are others that love to teach you how to make an antenna. Yes, for these portable radios, and it will work for here, I've got an antenna I made that rolls up. It's made out of cable, and it's in my little orange box that I use for all my emergency gear. I, I can hang it. I, I have done it. I've, I've hung it over a, a, an air conditioner sticking out of a window in a building with a piece of rope. Communications was phenomenal. So it doesn't have to be bad. And by all means, next video we're going to look at what's in my station now. I made big changes this year. My station has nothing in it that was there last year. This, yeah, okay, the power supply is the only, th and the handhelds are the only things that are older than a year. But you don't have to buy the latest and greatest. 5,000. A really beautiful ICOM radio is over $20,000 Canadian. And I've spoken in the past. I remember a long, lengthy chat with an American who had one. And yes, it sounded beautiful. It was great. He felt my signal was great also. So, okay. That's a way of it. It does not have to be expensive. Don't let your wallet be your guide, and um, that way you shouldn't cause any uh, fear and consternation in your, your lady friend if, or wife if you have one. Go ahead and do it. And with that, I'm going to wish you all the best. As we say in the amateur radio community, 73, best wishes. Have yourself a good day. And um, yes, we'll talk about other things in the next little while because as I'm doing my moving things and getting a whole bunch of things done here at the house uh, it's a good time to look into this take care all the best Ted's clear 73